years ago when I first heard about this game, I would have never thought that they would combine two things I really enjoyed, things in the Type Moon franchise and flashy moves with giant rhombus. But Dojin Circle Work have done it with Battle Moon Wars. Featuring the cast from Type Moon's works at the time, such as Skihime, Kagetsu Toya and Melty Blood, to Fate Stay Night and Fate Hollow Anoraxia, and even Karano Kyokai alongside some original characters by work, in a tactical strategy game inspired by the Super Robot Wars series. The game was released in four installments, or acts, from 2005 to 2008, with a final revision completed in 2009, which is what this review was based off. The game has been fan translated into English, and an English patch is available online. In Battle Moon Wars, you can pick between one of two original characters, with some difference in the story depending on who you pick. You have Takumi Atsuta, who represents the super-type characters in the Super Robot Wars game, who are generally heavy-hitting and heavy-tanking characters, or his partner Haruna Mochiski, who represents real-type characters who are more agile and hit-and-run based. Takumi and Haruna are members of an organisation known as Shinny, who investigate mysterious events, and are given an assignment to investigate Misaki City, the city which Tsukihime and, by extension, Kagetsu Toya and Melty Blood takes place in. After dispatching some enemies, Takumi and Haruna split up and, depending on who you're following, will meet up with characters from Skihime and Fate Stay Night along the way before getting back together and tackling the big bad guys as one big group. But for a doujin game, is it any good? Find out in... The Good. Given the information on each of the Type Moon series available to them at the time, I think Work did a pretty good job implementing a lot of the lore of each franchise into the game's story and making it work. The game is surprisingly tame, given some of the content it's based off, since the Skihime and Fate series both started off as visual novels with gore and erotic content. And the game does a reasonably good job at explaining some of the plot points, though if you're not familiar with each series, you can feel a little lost. For Skihime, the game follows Melty Blood, the fighting game which takes place after the events of it, and Kagetsu Toya, while Fate Stay Night follows its Heaven's Feel route. Characters and plot points from both work fairly well together, and even Kara no Kyokai, the story which sets up a lot of the elements and terms used in Skihime and Fate, weaves in quite well as their characters are well respected and play roles in developing the characters from Skihime and Fate. The game also had limited assets to work with in terms of Kara no Kyokai, as at the time the films based on it were released during Battle Moon Wars development, hence why the character Toka Ozaki looks a little different than how she's portrayed today, due to her artwork being based on her original design though her appearance in Fate Extra is a nod to this. The attention to detail is really appreciated, and although now a little dated, still holds up pretty well today. As I mentioned earlier, the game is inspired by the Super Robot Wars series, right down to its gameplay. Super Robot Wars is very well known for being a game featuring crossovers from a lot of mecha anime, with their plots intertwining with one another, which Battle Moon Wars has emulated with Type Moon's works. The game is a love letter to the series, featuring some moves which are homages by attacks shown in Super Robot Wars, and in their references respective shows, and as someone who enjoys playing Super Robot Wars games, it was an absolute treat. Animations are a little simple in the beginning, but as newer installments were added, the quality of animations also got better too, and with the release of the final revision, some of the older animations did get touched up. The battle music which accompanies them also works perfectly, which adds to the charm. You can also view character and enemy attacks in the game's character dictionary too. The game also features secret characters who can join your team if prerequisites are met, and battle masteries, optional challenges which can affect the difficulty of the game. If all battle masteries are completed, then you'll unlock an additional mission which in turn will unlock new characters for New Game Plus. The game does have a fair bit of replayability, and it all comes down to following the same formula set by its inspiration. However, despite how much I appreciate the game, it does have a fault, so I'll get to it in... The Bad. To be expected from a doujin game, some of the game's creative choices I can't say I entirely agree with. Given how serious Type Moon can be, some of the enemies your characters face range from animals, though some of them make sense with Skihime and, by extension, Fate Hollow Anoraxia, to Undead, also making some sense with Skihime, though they seem to be more cute and unfortunate, to robots, and Yeta Robos for some reason. Two of the main antagonists in Skihime end up becoming some weird ninja character which doubles as comic relief and downplays how dangerous they were in the source material, and soon characters from Fate Stone Knight are absent, though one of them understandably for plot reasons. Some characters, especially original characters, are mentioned and don't even show up at all or make very brief appearances. A good example of this is Takumi and Haruna's handler Mike, a talking cat who shows up at the very start of the game and is never heard from or of again until a passing comment much later. Characters that join from the other main characters' roots aren't all explained in detail, 
and is a shortcoming that affects Super Robot Wars 2 unless you've played different routes. The game is a little lacking on the battle quotes as well, as even with Super Robot Wars, characters would normally alternate between several lines when in battle, with special dialogue when dealing with bosses or characters they're familiar with. While this is true to some extent with Battle Moon Wars, particularly with the latter, sometimes characters will just say their default lines and treat them as any other enemy despite their links to them. It just feels a little out of character to me. With that though, let's wrap things up with... The Opinion For a doujin game, Battle Moon Wars has been quite an enjoyable game to play, and it feels refreshing to revisit it given that Type Moon's biggest focus is now on the Fate franchise, with Skihime being put to the wayside. I'm still waiting for that remake, damn it. You could probably make a game like this featuring nothing but Fate Grand Order characters at this point, given the amount of figures doubling as servants in it, but if you appreciate Type Moon's works, especially with some of the stuff outside of the Fate series, then this game is one to look at. Likewise, if you also happen to enjoy tactile strategy games with large numbers and flashy moves like the Super Robot Wars series. Type Moon's works do go deeper than just Skihime, Fate and Kara no Kyokai, with other stuff like Notes and DDD, and its creator Kanoko Nasu's storytelling style and characters, which really got me into Type Moon in the first place, starting with Skihime. I do wonder what Nasu's thoughts on Battle Moon Wars is, and it would be interesting to hear about it. With that though, it is time for my rating. I would give Battle Moon Wars Shin Get a Robo from Get a Robo Armageddon out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.